Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Nikolai Petkov, uh, and I'm working for the Bulgarian Society for the Protection of Birds. And I have been focused uh, for quite some time on the conservation work of the red-breasted goose. And today I would like to share uh, some of our uh, success uh, stories and uh, also uh, to show our work on the conservation of the species. Uh, so red-breasted goose, uh, it's a species, uh, probably one of the most beautiful and enigmatic geese species around the world. Uh, and it's an Arctic breeding species. Uh, it breeds in the high Arctic of uh, Russia on uh, three, mainly on three peninsulas there, Yamal, Gidan, and Taimir. And here on this map, uh, you can see the flyway of the species uh, showing the, the breeding grounds uh, in the high Arctic. And then the migration roads that uh, goes along the Ob River then reaches the north part, northern parts of Kazakhstan, and then passing through the south of Russia again, it reaches the the Black Sea area where uh, it is wintering. Uh, the population has dwindled uh, and changed through the years, so. In 1970 uh, was the first time that uh, an assessment of uh, the decline of the species has been noted. Uh, and it was thought that there are around 30,000 uh, birds at that time. Uh, in the past, uh, up to the 1960s, these species uh, used to winter on the west banks of the uh, Caspian Sea, uh, mostly in Azerbaijan, but the shift and change in the crops that are grown there uh, forced the species to look for new wintering grounds. Uh, up to the 1960s, in those areas uh, along the western coast of Caspian Sea, they were grown uh, mostly wheat. Uh, on which the, the species is feeding in winter. But uh, then it was decided uh, during Soviet time that uh, this uh, crop will be replaced by technical crops like cotton. Uh, so the species no longer had uh, any uh, foraging base there. So it started slowly shifting towards the north, west and west coast of uh, the Black Sea. Uh, where it winters in Ukraine, Romania, and Bulgaria. And the monitoring showed that uh, in the mid and late uh, 90s, uh, the population of the species reached uh, uh, probably around 90, 95,000 birds. But in early 2000s, at the start of the new century, it was uh, evident that there is some decline which was calculated to be over half of the population. Uh, so the population of the species was assessed to be around 42,000 at the start of the new century. Today, uh, it is thought that there are about 50 to 60,000 red-breasted geese in the world. Uh, and it's still globally threatened uh, with vulnerable category. So, as I mentioned, it, the Arctic Russia is the only breeding uh, place of this species. Uh, here you see some pictures of uh, the nesting, uh, the breeding environment of the species uh, with birds on the nests and also with the newly hatched clutch uh, here. Uh, it is uh, breeding there in uh, quite sparse colonies. Uh, in many cases, the, the breeding uh, pairs are associated with uh, the vicinity of a nest of a big raptor, usually peregrine falcon or uh, other uh, raptors in the area. And this is a mutual benefit for both species. Uh, the geese are benefiting from the bird of prey protecting the 
area around uh, the nest. And on the other hand, the, the raptor species is benefiting from the uh, vigilance and the uh, noise uh, made by the geese uh, around uh, their nests when they spot uh, any terrestrial or other predator that uh, the raptor can chase away rapidly afterwards. So here you see the migration route of the species. Uh, the species uh, flies around 6,000 kilometers in each direction from the breeding grounds to the wintering areas and back uh, twice a year uh, as part of its uh, annual cycle. Uh, there are a few key staging sites and places where the, the species stops for quite some time. And uh, the steppes in Kazakhstan are, or the lakes in the steppe of northern Kazakhstan are one of the key areas uh, where the species is staging for quite some time, up to month and a half, two months uh, during autumn and spring migration. And here you see some pictures uh, illustrating some of our field work uh, uh, with uh, colleagues from Kazakhstan and uh, other experts uh, where we are camping in the in a step nearby the lakes uh, that are uh, providing the roost sites for the for the migra migrating geese there. Uh, and we try to uh, record and evaluate the numbers of the species uh, that are passing through this area every October and in spring uh, around May. Uh, the species uh, stages there because it's an important stopover, uh, stopover area where the, the migra migrating birds are building up energy for the rest of the migration uh, stage. Uh, either it's the pr preparing and building of energy for the uh, awaited breeding season or uh, preparing for the difficult periods of the winter uh, in during the autumn migration. And another important stopover uh, area for the species is uh, the Manage Gudilo depression uh, in the Republic of Kalmykia, which is autonomous uh, country within Russian Federation. Uh, as an interesting fact, this is the only Buddhist country on the uh, European continent. Uh, the population there is Buddhist. Uh, it holds uh, an important uh, bottleneck area for the migration of the species and twice a year uh, the migrating uh, red-breasted geese, uh, almost the entire population, uh, stops uh, during different periods of time uh, in the area of Manich uh, Godzilla. And speaking about the species, uh, we uh, have to share what the main threats for it are, not only in Bulgaria, but uh, most of these are common across the, across the flyway. So poaching and disturbance uh, during hunting season is one of the major problems for the, for the species. Uh, because uh, during migration, during the non-breeding season, uh, the red-breasted geese uh, are mixing up with uh, the huge flocks of greater white-fronted geese, which are huntable species uh, across their range. And uh, thus make, uh, mixing up with uh, these uh, huntable species, uh, the red-breasted geese get exposed to the hunting, the disturbance associated with the legal hunting, but also uh very often uh red-breasted geese fall victim either to uh unintentional uh shooting uh, at them in mixed flocks or uh very often it's uh, quite intentional uh poaching uh on them because uh, the 
bird is uh, the species is protected throughout its range uh, and all the countries that it crosses uh, it is pr protected by law so killing it is illegal uh, however uh, there, there's been calculations uh, in the uh, some five or ten years ago uh, that uh, up to probably 40 percent of the flyway population uh, becomes victim to poaching and illegal killing uh, every year uh, during migration which is uh, very high and though it's calculated on a so small sample size it's still disturbing that uh, there is uh, potentially that high mortality other things uh, that threaten the, the species and other geese species as well is uh, the use of rodenticides and other agricultural pesticides in some countries. Illegal fishing at the roosting lakes because it causes disturbance and uh, makes the birds to shift and move from uh, their roosting areas. There, in many countries, uh, especially uh, along the Black Sea coast, there is a, a rapid development of uh, touristic infrastructure. Uh, so this is uh, destroying uh, and disturbing the feeding and roosting areas for the species. And in recent decades, uh, there's been a quite chaotic and uh, uncontrolled development of wind farm energy uh in the, especially in the wintering areas of Do in dobruja which is shared uh, region between bulgaria and romania and there is uh, sufficient uh, scientific evidence showing that uh, the wind farms uh, and the infrastructure associated with them uh, is causing uh, displacement impacts on the species and since 2004, uh, the Bulgarian Society for the Protection of Birds uh, started working uh, and partnering with the Wildfire and Wetland Trust uh, to expand their work, uh, uh, our work on the red-breasted goose conservation, uh, which uh, culminated in a big EU-funded uh, life project uh, focused uh, on the conservation of the species in their main wintering grounds uh, in northeast Bulgaria. And then we made the first use of cannon nets in Bulgaria, uh, trying to catch geese and feed tax to them. Uh, so we managed to catch uh, over 100 redbreasts in three field season. Uh, and coloring a lot of birds and equipped with uh, radio and satellite tags uh, some 15 birds uh, to track migration and local movements and here you see some of the display of uh, the tag birds and these are radio tag birds that uh, moved between uh, the northeast Bulgaria and the southeast of Romania uh, this is the border of uh, between Romania and Bulgaria. So the, the birds do move between the two countries uh, during winter, depending on the weather conditions. Uh, and here you see more uh, of the uh, tracks of the radio tag birds. Uh, and this was uh, quite uh, valuable information connect, uh, connected uh, with the use of the area by the species, the connectivity between uh, feeding areas and roosting uh, lakes, uh, as well as uh, the connection and movements between the roost lakes uh, within the area of the species. We also found out uh, that uh, there has already been started a, a change uh, in, the, in the wintering uh, location, so uh, the birds were shifting uh, their wintering areas uh, uh, depending on the weather conditions. The, the warming climate has uh, a certain impact on the species. And one of these impacts is that uh, it tends to short stop during the migration along its uh, flyway. Uh, so here you see uh, birds uh, tagged 
in the winter of uh, 2012, 2013, uh, which uh, subsequently the next winter spent the, the winter instead of uh, Bulgaria and Romania, they spent the winter in uh, the area of Crimea in Ukraine. And here you see some of the tracks of the of the birds. And here is uh, the Kuma Manich lowlands depression, uh, which I mentioned about. And this is the important staging area of Kazakhstan. So a lot of field work has been done during this uh, big uh, project uh, with the support and help of a lot of volunteers. Uh, they all passed specific training for the uh, studies that they had to uh, collect data for uh, during the field work. Uh, part of it was uh, assessment of the impact of uh, grazing on the crop yields uh, because uh, there was uh, some conflict with the local farmers. Uh, and we implemented quite detailed uh, assessment of the impact uh, on crops by the species, developed uh, specific uh, agri-environmental uh, measures uh, to compensate uh, and reduce the tension with the farmers based on the results of our studies. And on the issue with illegal killing and poaching, uh, we solve it through different uh, approaches. One of them is organizing mixed patrol, looking for the support of uh, the local and regional authorities. Here you see uh, a patrol uh, with the support of uh, local police uh, offices uh, that is checking the, the hunters during hunting days. Uh, and here is a unfortunate uh, red-breasted goose that uh, became victim of one of the hunters along with uh, huntable uh, white, uh, greater white-fronted geese. And here you see uh, an example of the attitude of some hunters uh, towards the information boards indicating protected areas, regulations on hunting or uh, the presence of protected species. Another extra that we added to our work was collecting evidence by x-rays uh, of, of live birds uh, to check for uh, presence of uh, pellets uh, in their bodies because uh, very often uh, the hunters are shooting uh, at very big distances when they cannot kill the birds but still some pallets uh, get into the bodies and stay within the bodies of the birds uh, and they either uh, lead to some uh, inability to fly properly or uh, also the pallets uh, with the time can uh, dissolve into the body and lead uh, to lead poisoning of the birds. But we were focusing also on education and awareness raising, uh, preparing uh, booklets and information materials for hunters and working with uh, the small uh, kids in the area where the species occurs uh, because uh, they will be the next uh, generation of uh, even of hunters, of decision makers and uh, getting to know the species and know the issues around its conservation is important uh, to seed it into their minds and uh, wh whatever they choose to be uh, when they're grown up, they still might have this uh, initial uh, knowledge on conservation issues that uh, we try to introduce them and reveal to them. So all the work uh, naturally led to uh, developing a much larger flyway project uh, because uh, we found out that there are issues uh, like the illegal killing uh, and poaching on the species that happen along the flyway. And working only in Bulgaria and Romania as European Union countries would not help a lot. So we had to work uh, along the flyway 
and we chose to work uh, on areas where the species is concentrating. So these are the staging areas in uh, Kazakhstan, uh, the staging areas in uh, Kalmykia, and of course the wintering grounds uh, in Bulgaria, Romania and Ukraine. So we work to fill in gap knowledge uh, on the migration and the winter distribution of the species uh, with the help of uh, satellite tracking. So we conducted uh, several expeditions uh, for catching and tagging geese, uh, both in the wintering grounds in Bulgaria, but also uh, during uh, spring migration in Kazakhstan, where we cooperated with uh, our very good and experienced Kazakhstanian colleagues. And we managed to fit uh, some 40 red-breasted geese with satellite tags, which uh, collected a lot of data, revealing data on migration roads, staging areas, survival of the species. Uh, and this data, the good thing about this data is that it has already been put into use so in Russia, it was used to advocate for the uh, de uh, declaration of new protected areas uh, at the staging areas and to uh, regulate uh, the hunting in Kalmykia. So thanks to the project activities, uh, a very significant achievement uh, was reached, uh, the ban of spring hunting around Manish Gudilu area. Uh, which ensures a very safe passage for the species uh, during its uh, migration to the breeding sites. Uh, otherwise, uh, in the past, uh, spring hunting was allowed there, and very often uh, the pairs that are already formed uh, and flying towards the breeding areas uh, were disrupted, uh, some of the partners might be killed or both birds could be killed uh, during the hunting, uh, the spring hunting. So this uh, we consider as a very uh, good and major achievement of our work. Also, we worked in Kazakhstan uh, to keep the closure uh, on uh, spring hunting of geese. And also we worked with uh, hunting estates in Kazakhstan to improve the management of the sites and uh, allow more room for uh, rest and feeding of the of the birds uh, during the peak of the migration of the of the red-breasted goose and uh, i'm happy to say that one of the key areas in uh, kulikol taldikol area in uh, north kazakhstan uh, which is actually a, a hunting estate uh, and through our work, they were partners on our project. And within the discussion process and negotiation process with them and uh, local Kazakhstanian experts uh, using the evidence from the satellite tags, uh, movements of the birds, uh, direction of the movements, uh, an agreement was reached and now 35% of the hunting estate are left uh, as a non-hunting zone where the, the birds could feed and rest uh, during the day and night uh, without problems, especially during the peak of the migration of the geese. And here on these photos, you see uh, some of, uh, of the field activities like ringing uh, red-breasted geese, fitting satellite tags, uh, monitoring them uh, during autumn migration in the Kazakhstanian steppes. And here is one of the birds uh, equipped with a GPS uh, tag to follow uh, its migration. We worked extensively with the stakeholders and mostly with the hunters, uh, both focusing on local hunters and tourist hunters, uh, producing uh, a lot of materials, uh, developing national species action plans. And here you see on this side, uh, a very good example, which was developed by the hunting estate, which with which we were cooperating uh, in partnership in the project. And they have developed a specific uh, 
notes uh, where they inform the hunters that uh, there's protected species in the area. Uh, it also uh, includes a map of the non-hunting and uh, zones allowed for hunting. So quite uh, detailed information is provided to the visiting hunters uh, to reduce the, the incidence of uh, illegal, accidental or intentional hunting. We did work with them uh, a lot uh, and organized special trainings for them. Uh, one of the most significant ones uh, was focused uh, on organizing uh, specific uh, training workshops uh, focused on uh, sustainable water bird harvesting uh, based on uh, the conservation guidelines uh, developed by the EVA, uh, the African Eurasian Water Bird Agreement, uh, where we had uh, international uh, experienced uh, lecturers, trainers uh, who participated in these trainings. And we organized uh, three sets of uh, workshops, one uh, training workshop in Bulgaria as uh, one of the key wintering uh, countries for the species, another one in Romania, uh, also because of uh, its uh, great importance for the wintering of the species. And we organized one uh, workshop in Kazakhstan, but uh, with the participation of uh, representatives from Russia and Ukraine. Uh, and we had representatives of hunting estates, of uh, conservation authorities, of uh, hunter associations, uh, etc., etc., conservationists. Uh, so quite mixed and diverse groups uh, of people discussing and talking about uh, problems and solutions for uh, to ensure sustainable water bird harvesting, not, uh, not only focusing on conservation species, uh, on protected species, but uh, generally on the migratory water birds. Uh, because uh, the migrating birds are a shared resource, so you need to have a wider uh, flyway approach to their conservation and uh, management, even if they're uh, huntable species. We worked quite a lot uh, with the children, uh, school children uh, and also general public. We developed uh, a very interesting interactive exhibit, uh, parts of which you can see here. So this interactive exhibit was uh, developed uh, in a very accessible way, uh, presenting very uh, close to the uh, general public knowledge understanding of movements uh, to show the migration of the of the red-breasted goose, uh, what distances it is passing, how it relates for uh, to, for example, uh, the the movements uh, of humans, uh, how fast uh, it is compared to human movements, and also to show the the problems and the threats that the species is facing during this uh, migration. Uh, and this uh, interactive exhibit was uh, developed and translated into four languages. So it was uh, produced in Bulgarian, Rome uh, uh, Ukrainian, uh, Kazakhstanian and Russian. And it was displayed uh, in uh, four countries throughout uh, all major cities uh, in Kalmykia, in Bulgaria, and in Kazakhstan and Ukraine. Uh, so uh, it was seen by over 40,000 people uh, and also was part of the um, annual Tulip Festival that is organized uh, every year in Kalmykia, an event that is linked to uh, nature-friendly tourism activities and environment protection, uh, where we had a special uh, type of uh, traditional tent called yurta, uh, which was used to uh, install the exhibited site uh, to uh, present it uh, during the festival. 
So this is uh, more or less uh, sharing what we have been doing on the on the the project. Uh, 